Hey everyone, I thought I'd show you some of the pieces that are coming to the shop today. Some pieces that I've worked on over the last couple of days and also what's sold. Um, so I guess we'll get started. If you see my hand over here, sorry about that. I've got a window with some light coming in. And I, I'll try not to block it, but let's get started. This is, there we go. Some of you might know her, some of you might not. This is uh, Raggedy Ann, who is part of the duo Raggedy Ann and Andy. She's an old charm, old enamel charm, it looks like. 1981, I remember her. Used to be a show, used to be a doll, used to be all sorts of fun stuff. So she's gonna be under the uh, nostalgia section here shortly. She's a cute little charm. She doesn't have a bail on her, but I think what I might do is show her in a picture with a little bit of yarn. These would be fun, like attached to keychains, attached to backpack loops. I would even maybe attach her to a zipper, which I thought would be really fun. But she'll be in the shop today. Let's move her over. These two are just insanely, like, reminds me of the 80s so much. And actually, I think it's from before that. I think it's, yes, yeah, so a 1974 Princess Mimi. So this is a designer that makes um, belt loops. So that's what these are. And when you have them on your belt, you slide your belt through here, right? So one side comes this way, one side comes this way, and then the belt, I can't see this, there we go, the belt attaches. And so what is on the inside of the belt is like this, but what you see on the exterior along the pant loop, along the belt loop is this, how freaking cool. How coolly vintage is that? And these move. So they're sold as a pair, obviously. I've got a couple of her, other of her pieces. Let me see if I have them within arm's reach. But they are um, singles. I don't have the pair, I'm on the search. So this is one. So I'm on the, the search for the loop part of this, the attachment part. And then this one too, this leaf. So you see how these are like flush. So what I'm working on with these, which aren't flush, is I'm going to be straightening them today. So I might do that in the video, but um, we're straightening these so they're flush and then they'll be ready to go. So these will be in the um, shop today. Actually, I'll leave these up here. They look kind of cool in the background there, don't they? Um, this beautiful silver and garnet will be going in the shop today. What I love about this is, so it's got the beading, this oxidized beading here, and it's got the same thing along here, but then along these, it's almost like a braided. I wonder if you can see that. Let me see if I can, there you go. It's almost braided, and it just gives like a whole nother dimension to the larger the larger wings there. So this is the back. And this is all intentional in the design. So this oxidation here appears to be pretty even throughout. And it's the style of this butterfly, which I thought was really, really fun. So that'll be in the shop today. This one and this one actually too. Both of these will be in the shop today too. And there's just something that's so, look at that. The rhinestones from the 60s, 70s, 80s, the 40s, the 50s, I mean, all the rhinestones, there's just no comparing the rhinestones to what they were and what they are today. I mean, some of the pieces now, let me see if I have something that's a little bit more modern here next to me. Okay, so yeah. 
a little bit more contemporary. So this. So this is pretty, right? But it's got a lot of this pave. And a lot of times that's... The stones are beautiful, but it's to kind of like mask, in my opinion, almost. One, you don't have to use as many stones. And two, it just kind of makes things brighter than what they are. But look at these here. Look at how they twinkle. You're not going to get that with... You see how the, the twinkle is slightly diminished here? There's less stones in this and there's more of the silver. There's a little twinkle. But if you look at these, each individual stone... Gosh, they're just going to catch the light. I mean, they were... I mean, obviously, we're still talking about these and it's so many, many years later from when these were made. So it, it speaks to the craftsmanship just overall. So this does have some discoloration here. You see that it's almost a little yellow. The great part is this part is not visible. What you're gonna wear and what you're gonna see, what people are gonna see is this. So that's the fun thing about vintage. And imagine the history a brooch like this has seen. I always just kinda get thrown my imagination just kind of goes wild of where these pieces have been who has worn them what events they've gone to what outfits they've been a part of it's just so fun to kind of think about this one's got a little bit of discoloration also on the edges and this kind of dips in the middle which is neat but overall i mean tell me that wouldn't be fun on like a straw hat even for the summer while you're out gardening or something. And you can wear these these days on just about anything. I've seen them on some boots, like Ugg boots, which is funny. This is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a premier design piece. What's beautiful about their pieces is each of these stones. You see that faceting? There's little squares in each of these stones on the back which is really neat see that mirror there's like a mirror ring mirroring effect there mirror design it's very very high polished very pretty and has that oxidation that beading oxidation across the middle or around the middle I should say and it has that same beading around here that we had seen in this butterfly that beading on the oxidation is so beautiful and it speaks oh my gosh look at that that's so pretty the colors on this are are absolutely stunning too and it just speaks to the quality i think some of these like premier design they more they've mass produced their pieces more than some of these other pieces but not to the extent that we see today so they're still Highly sought after, which I love, um, and obviously so, because look, look at this. I think my favorite is this light green. It's really pretty. All right. Um, okay, so let's see if you can see this. So each of these genuine stones, looks like lapis here. I don't know, that might be... Carnelian, although that's kind of dark. I'll have to look up when I have my notes. And then, um, I don't know what this one might be. But if you can tell, the carvings, let me back up, there we go, are of a beetle, a scarab, to me at least. I could be wrong. You tell me what you think. But it looks like a scarab. And this design and the stone color, it reminds me, very much of when their jewelry took, like the Egyptian, had an Egyptian phase. So there were a few times in history where jewelry took a lot of inspiration from Egypt and the Egyptians. And that scarab in the middle is kind of a telltale, but also these stones and the way they're set and the color of this gold tone just screams it for me, but I love it. I love this. Um, look at this lady. This will be, and all of these again will be in the shop today. I'm going to sit down and work on it right after.
after I show, but I thought I haven't done an actual long form video in a while. I've just been uploading shorts. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to show you kind of what was coming up. I watch a lot of I Love Lucy, and this just gives me the 1950s I Love Lucy vibes. Dressing up for a night out, going to the movies. I'll be honest, I wouldn't dress like this for the movies. I'm too lazy for all that, but I, I love admiring it. And the women who can do that, there's just something so elegant. So I don't know if you can see, it's not a part of her dress. This is the enamel that's wearing off. You know, and I hope one day I can like re-enamel some of this stuff. But I don't have that capability at the moment. I would love to. But it almost gives you kind of where the bends are in the in the coat jacket, in the fur. It almost kind of gives you that zebra print vibe, which is really fun. And of that time, let's see. This is one of my favorites. And actually, my son likes this one too. My son likes this one and my son likes little guy here <laughs> um, that little pig is not going up not anytime soon at least not until he can he can let go of that one but um this is a cutie I love that he has a little bit of a crooked smile almost a little smirk like haha you know I love you this is fun it's almost um not a ceramic but, oh, not a plaster, but it almost feels like that. It feels like a, like a molded plaster almost. Maybe not a clay, not quite a clay, not a polymer, but it's just a very fun. This almost, I thought this was like plaid tartar, tar, plaid, tartan plaid. That's what I'm trying to say. At first when I saw it, which is what I loved, I love the contrast between this baby blue and the heart and his, his fun little quirky smirk. So you'll have to tell me what you love about this little guy if he ends up being one of your favorites. I'm going to have him in the shop today too and his little buddy, little thimble. Does anyone sew anymore? I see a lot of people that still sew on Etsy, which I love. I love seeing the process of people sewing. What does this say, 19? 1983 Hallmark. So I know there's a lot of collectors of the Hallmark pins. Um, I like, I have quite a few actually of the Hallmark pins um, that I've been collecting. So if you're out there and you're a Hallmark pin collector or you know someone that is, Please send them my way because I'm thinking about putting up some of the pieces from my own collection too. But he's a little cutie. He's just happy to be in his little thimble. So he's going up. Um, and these are neat because they're very similar. I'll put this down so I don't block the light. Very similar to the Weiss black diamond piece that I have in my shop already, which they're a bit pricey just because of the designer, um, but these are a great option if you really like the Weiss earrings, but you're on a little bit more of a budget, which I totally understand. But these pieces, these are very similar in tone to the Black Diamond Weiss. They're faceted, beautifully faceted. There's a little bit of speckling in that one and very similar in design. So if you are looking for the Weiss look on a budget, I actually have a couple of pieces. This is one, um, mm, 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 mm. this is another, you can tell the difference in the rhinestone quality. So this is almost like an onyx hematite rhinestone. Um, this will be in the shop tomorrow, but those are there. These are much closer to the smoky gray of the Weiss piece. I wonder if I have them. Let me see if I have them. I should have them within reach so I can, ooh, I don't mean to be shaking you. Compare and show you. Oh, bear with me. I don't mean to be shaking you. All right, I got them. 
All right, so this is the right, and these are the Weiss. So these are the Black Diamond Weiss, which, oh, I just, if you have the money to splurge, if you have the budget to splurge, I'm telling you, these are the way to go. If you don't, and you're on a budget, this is a great, let me move this out of the, this is a great alternative. The stones have that iridescence to it. It has the depth. They're really substantial in size. And they have that very gray, that smoky, beautiful smoky depth to it. So those are those. I'll show you the Weiss again too because I'm just, I'm beside myself every time I see these. They're just, oh, they're so good. But that speaks to the quality of the rhinestones like I was talking about from that time. The rhinestones are just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Okay, well, I'll show you the last three, the last three pieces. This is another one where the rhinestones are incredible. And nice blouse nice blazer people are going to think it's the real thing just because of the quality of rhinestones they used it's beautiful this is a pretty piece i like that it's substantial here and here but then you've got this like minimalistic style going on personally it's, it's one of my favorite styles one of my favorite looks. This, again, is speaking to the quality of the rhinestones. Hold on, let me see if I can get some good light and show you this. Oh. You see that? It glistens and it can just go on and on and on for days. I have this, this same, I'm like this in the, um, the listing video. But it really, it just, it's so, there's three different tones of blue in this, and it just feels like it goes deeper and deeper and deeper the longer you look at it. It just kind of draws you in. But that'll be up today, too. If you really like blue or you, you're looking for a gift for someone, oh, you can even see that in the background. Look at that. Just twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. Um, okay. Oh, and if you know anyone that maybe their birthstone is this color. I mean, can't go wrong with a gift like that. This, for the bowler in your family, there's the pin right there. I didn't notice this at first. I saw him and I thought, what a, what a neat, why is that like that? Followed, and then I realized there was a pin there. There was a bowling pin there. And they used a pearl, a small pearl as the bowling ball. Isn't that neat? Let me see if I can get it close up to focus. It's beautifully set in there. And it's just a little bowler, a bowling pin. It just snaps in there. And it is probably one of the most interesting pins that I've come across in a long time when you when you when we're talking about sports or very kind of niche pins I, I see a ton of beautiful pins pins like these that I adore and I absolutely you know I can find something to fall in love with in every single piece but this is one of those that's just so interesting and you'll wear it and someone will just be like well, wait a second what is that and they'll just want to look at it and just admire the lines and the designs and that's how I am with this. And then if you look up close, you can even see the etchings in his clothes. You can find, you can see the belt, you can see his shoes, his fun little hat, his hair. It's just such an interesting, you're not going to find anything like this these days. But it's so neat. And who doesn't love bowling? Who, who does not love bowling? So, those are the pieces that I'll have up today in the shop, and um, 
I'm really excited to get those up. So if you had a favorite from the ones that I showed you, please let me know. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick what I'm sending out today too. This is the Napier two-tone necklace. I have um, had this listed when I first started my shop, which really wasn't even that long ago. It was just a few months ago I started my shop. And um, I've been doing this for a while now and working on jewelry for a while. But I was like, you know, there's got to be a better way that I can kind of share what I love about all of these pieces that I'm working on. And Etsy kind of found me, which was nice. So I put this up and she is going to a new home today. Miss Dee Dee, thank you. So I wanted to share. And that's it. Those are the pieces that are going up today. And I hope if out of these you have a favorite and perhaps it's this guy. Maybe it's this guy. But if you have a favorite, you'll let me know. Um, and even pop into the shop and maybe say hi. And let me know that you're from YouTube. And I really appreciate all of you guys watching the videos. I'll try to get more of these up and the actual cleaning process. Um, I haven't done one of those in a while. And there's a few pieces I have that I need to repair. So I'll be sure to share that process and put those up. Um, there's some pearls I have to fix. And we're going to do some deconstructions too. So really appreciate you being here. Bye!